Now, this is the life cycle of Deneasolium. The picture is from CDC Atlanta. Here, look at the number one. It is here. The cycle starts from here. We have the eggs of gravid proglottids in the feces, which are passed into the environment. An adult is passing out the feces. In the feces, you will be having the gravid proglottids. Gravid proglottids means the ones which are farther away from the scolex will be as big as possible and as gravid as possible, very pregnant, right? So they will be releasing the eggs. Either the proglottid or the eggs can be found in the soil. From there, if a pig is trying to graze the grass in that local area or is trying to eat something from the floor area, you will be able to have this particular pig acquiring these eggs or proglottids. Okay, if we speak about the longest cystode, we can also speak about the smallest cystode. The smallest cystode affecting human being, which one is it? Yes, it is a very simple name, Hymenolepis nana. That is why we introduce the name dwarf tapeworm. Okay, this and this are really interesting questions that have been raised in the past 20 years. Okay, apart from that, you will be having man acting as definitive host. Man is the definitive host in terms of tapeworms. If you focus on tapeworms, man will be the definitive host. But whenever there are rules, you can look for exceptions. We've already discussed about one exception about cysticercus cellulose, where the human being is suffering from cysticercosis, where he acts as an intermediate host. Apart from that, it can also be taken into consideration echinococcus granulosis. This echinococcus granulosis will be having dog as the definitive host and man as the intermediate host. And this is a dog tapeworm. This is also necessary information for your exams. Okay. Now, let's look at the uniqueness of Hymenolepis nana. This is an organism which requires only one host and that host is a human being. A small pro tip. Listen very carefully. Whenever you read about the life cycles of parastology or protozoology or metazoology in general, always remember one of the hosts has to be human being. Without human being, there is no point in learning it under medical or human parasitology. So remember, human being will be a definitive host. H. Nana has only one host and that is human being. That brings us to another question where we have Diphyllobothrium latum, which is the one special cestode attacking human being, which has three hosts. It has three hosts. You have the definitive host being human being, no doubt about it. But you have intermediate host number one, which is Cyclops. And we have intermediate host number two, which is Fish. These are also MCQs raised in a lot of question papers in the last 20 years. I hope you will be able to use them. Okay, now let's look at the combined logic of Taniasis. The Taniasis will tell you, you have four types of criteria. One is major, the second is minor, the third one is absolute criteria and the fourth one is a community based or a epidemiological criteria. What are the epidemiological criteria? If the patient is residing, so residence in the endemic area. If he is living in that area, the chances are higher that he might be suffering from the infection or infestation. Also, history of travel to the endemic area. Either he is living in the endemic area or he is making frequent travels in and out of the endemic area. Then look for any household contact. Contact with whom? If a person in the home in your home is having a proper what does it mean a person at your home is having a proper contact with anybody who is infected with tania sodium 